Hi, this is Koshik Ranchad. Welcome to our weekly immigration show. Today, we're gonna have a really exciting case study for you for a J-1 waiver, and it was primarily based on country conditions, so you'll wanna stay tuned. And I am an attorney representing clients throughout the 50 states and worldwide. So if you haven't already, smash that like button, get ready to put in your comments if you have any questions, because we are gonna talk about a J-1 waiver applicant who is from Egypt. We're gonna talk about the latest processing times, the latest happenings. So you'll want to listen carefully. First of all, talk about the process. We filed the DS-3035 with the Department of State simultaneously while we filed the I-612 USCIS uh, application then the next step or part of that step is we include the legal the very detailed legal brief making the arguments of exceptional hardship which we file with USCIS so now I want to dive into well okay what are the processing times with this let's look at when we filed the case with USCIS that was back in October 2020 now in this case we did get a request for evidence that does happen in some cases this case we received a request for evidence from uscis that occurred in march 1st 2021 so you'll see we got about november december january february march about five months there before we got the request for evidence from uscis when we respond to the request for evidence we like to make sure that we are providing a very thorough response we filed may 2021 to respond to the request for evidence. And we were very excited because July 8th, 2021, USCIS sent the IA-613 to Department of State. Five days later, Department of State received that request from USCIS. What that means is it took them five days to basically say that they, to date that and receive it. And then it took Department of State over a year to issue a favorable recommendation. So in August, of 2022 they issued a favorable recommendation august 31st 2022 uscis approved the case so that was the, how the processing times played out you'll notice here that the hang up was with the department of state it took them 52 weeks well their posted processing times are 52 weeks 52 weeks they are taking before issuing a favorable recommendation or issuing a decision now in this case, we also even filed an expedite request, but it still took them 13 months in this case to issue a favorable recommendation with an expedite request. This one was really, we were just waiting down to the wire because they issued this approval right down to the our client's last day of status. It is very frustrating sometimes to see how long the government takes to adjudicate these. We hope it's gonna speed up their processing times because your lives are on hold until you get an approval. And you know, that's why I'm always recommending plan ahead. A lot of my consultations now, I think since I've been talking about planning ahead in my videos, you guys are listening, thank you, and planning ahead because, and not waiting till the last minute, we've been able to create some great strategies and some great plans because you are thinking ahead and not waiting till the last minute, three months before you're gonna be out of status and then trying to apply, which, you know, sometimes you, some people just don't know. Um, and that's why you know, I love making these videos so you're educated on the process, you know what you need to do because I want you to be able to continue your life here and continue to stay with your family and also continue to benefit this amazing country. All right, now let's talk about how did we get this case approved. In order to qualify, you have to have a spouse that's a US citizen or lawful permanent resident or a child that's a US citizen or lawful permanent resident. So you need to have this basic requirement in order to be able to apply. So assuming you have those, then you have to demonstrate exceptional hardship. So it's not mere separation. So how did we do that in this case? Well, in this case, first of all, the qualifying relatives were based off of children. And here we talked primarily about Egyptian country conditions. We followed many, many, many Egyptian successful J-1 hardship waivers. And in this case, we talked about all of the hardships because of the country conditions that our clients would face. There's a myriad of them, including education, including access to healthcare, including even the horrible pollution. 
So those are some. Of course, we go into this in our legal brief in great detail. Also include a lot of documentation to back up what we're asserting in our brief, but that's how we were able to make those arguments. Many of the cases that we do for Egyptians are Egyptian academics, and we have been able to successfully make these arguments, including the country conditions, and then also sometimes the depending upon whatever the children's health conditions are or, or the spouse health conditions among other hardship factors. So this one, we were able to get approved primarily based off of the country conditions. We do like to include as many types of hardship as possible because the more that you have, the better it is because we're able to explain how all of these factors combined create exceptional hardship. I also want you to keep in mind that the J-1 waiver is not a lawful status. So even if you get the J-1 waiver approved, you still have to apply for a green card or some type of lawful status. So if that's employment-based, that could be an H-1B, that could be a national interest waiver for a green card or an EB-1 or a labor certification that leads to a green card. Or if you're married to a U.S. citizen, applying for the marriage-based green card. This waiver is great that it allows you to stay here and not return back to your home country based off of these exceptional hardship factors. And that's why I just love doing this area of law. It's so rewarding to work with you know many of the bright people like yourselves who are watching this video. I know many of you are working on just amazing kinds of interesting projects or working as academics or physicians. This is very rewarding work. And I just want to thank you for watching because in trusting our office, if you've worked with us, you truly are amazing because by bettering yourself, you're bettering your family. By bettering your family, you're bettering the world. And I want to say bye for now. See you next week.